my tutorial. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about how to create a winning Facebook Instagram and Instagram advertising strategy. We're going to talk about this is a question could be posed as well. Can I grow my audience without paying for Facebook ads? I'm going to clarify that for you. Goals of organic post and pay that. So everything you post on social must have a goal. We cannot have hazardly post something. Those days that you could just post something and hope for the rest, hope for the best, it's it doesn't have um, it's not a good strategy. Hope is never a good strategy for business only. Getting started with Facebook ads, so we're going to go through it. I'm going to go through how to do the ads. This is just strategy. Before we start, I'm going to go as to explain some of the stuff when it comes to ads. But in this in this webinar, I'm not going to share anything to do with how to create an ad. I am running a workshop on the 21st of um, on the 21st of April, which we're going to go through step by step of creating ads. I'm going to go through the three phases of Facebook ad advertising. One of the confusion things is not understanding how social advertising works. And um, let's begin. So quick thing about me, who I am, and why you should listen to me. So um, I built and sold two service businesses of my own, and I'm currently on my third service business, which I do advertising and social media marketing for, which we specialize with helping service-based businesses. Obviously, digital social advisor, and I've got 20 years experience in entrepreneurship, business, sales, marketing, leadership, and project management. Um, and I started when I was two, so let's just be clear. <laughs> All right, please get in touch with me. Um, we'd love to get social on LinkedIn. Okay, so one of the most common questions I hear when it comes to Facebook is this, and this could be yours as well. Can I grow my Facebook audience without paying? The short answer, yes, it is, you can. However, though, it's not, it, the Facebook has moved to become more pay to play kind of platform. At some point, you still have to spend some money, um, invest in what you create, invest in either graphic, writing a copy, the time that you have to schedule. So you can absolutely do that. Again, it is a pay-to-play platform. You, it's just reduced as your growth exponentially. The pay-to-play will help you to reach more audiences and reach, um, put your business in front of more people. So yes, you can. However, it needs to be combined with some advertising um, strategy for your, uh, for your brand. So you've got to consider that. There are two main benefits. When it comes to Facebook advertising, there are two main benefits that I think it's the most powerful when it comes to um, Facebook ads. One is the most powerful targeting and the cost efficiency. So let's go through it right now. Facebook ads comes with some powerful targeting capabilities. There are some of the most detailed and most effective means to target your audience online, which I don't believe any social platform has that capability. Facebook is still powerful. It is such an amazing platform. And we as a user, um, I don't know if you are a user, but we as a user, we give Facebook the algorithm so many signals when we are on the platform. So it's such a powerful targeting. And it's always been a challenge. Before Facebook, it was always a challenge to reach the right audiences. But this makes it so easy. Well, when I say easy, it gives you the capability to reach them. It gives you capability to target your perfect client by demographic, by their behaviors, where they are, their connection, and their life events. So it is so important. However, though, like I say, this is what I said when I say easy. You need to remember that in order for this to work well for you, you need to have a concrete understanding of every one of your target audiences, every one of your niche, every one of your ideal customers, every one of your customers, like your customer persona, whatever you're calling it. 
you need to have a concrete understanding in order for this platform to work for you. It is a good investment of time for you to actually sit down and put, um, get to know your ideal audiences. It doesn't have to be one. There are some businesses who have two or three, and that's absolutely fine. So you just create one persona or avatar for every single one of them. So when you're creating your ads, you target every single one of those segmentations. So it, it is um, the next one is cost efficiency. I don't know. It depends on how long you've had your business and how long you've been advertising. I, my first business back in 2001, you were in the mercy of yellow pages. If you had money, then definitely radio and TV. But it was just so expensive. So the second and probably one of the most important benefits is that Facebook ads are cost effective. So, and it has, it still has the lowest cost per thousand impression in advertising history. So the average cost, so the amazing people at Wordstream have done a, analyzed hundreds of client accounts to calculate the average cost per click, which is CPC, or cost per action on Facebook for 18 different industries. They found that the average across all the businesses type was dollar seventy two per click. I think I don't know if you can hear me, but so if my screen just froze. Okay. Okay, so then let's go back. So the amazing thing about WordStream analyzed hundreds of clients' accounts to calculate the average cost per click and cost per action. So what I mean by cost per action is, for example, um, conversion, filling out the form, putting out their details on there. And they've done it for eight different industries. They found the average across all business type for the cost per click was $1.72 and $18.68 per conversion, meaning the conversion meaning could be lead generation, so could be booking uh, an appointment, booking a um, coaching session. Compare that to average $56.11 on Google Ads. So Facebook is almost three times cheaper when it comes to any advertising. However, if you have been doing some advertising, <laughs> there are so many variables that influences how much, obviously, running ads on Facebook cost and the success of it. So these seven, this is from my experience, has been some of the cups. So these seven reasons are the um, reason that comes up most when it comes to um, and Facebook ads being expensive. Number one is lack of strategy and goal. I'm going to go through that not all Facebook ads are created equally. So not having any goals, not knowing what you're trying to achieve, who you're trying to reach, is the biggest influencer when it comes to cost, advertising costs. Remember I said who you're trying to achieve? Wrong audience. You have, even if you have a perfect offer, perfect service, perfect special for your audience. If you put that perfect offer in front of the wrong audience, you're gonna waste money. That's what I mean, your offer is not compelling. So you put the wrong offer in front of the right audience or you put a right offer in front of the wrong audience. Your messaging is enough. The copy is very important. It's very important that what you're putting on your ad resonates with your audience. Another one that I've seen, ad placement. So. When you're doing advertising, Facebook has that option that you can you can let Facebook decide on the placement or you can choose where you want to go. From my experience, it's such a powerful platform. It knows so much. And I never I never recommend for you to decide, okay, it's unless you've been doing advertising for your business for a long time and you're absolutely sure that it definitely has to be on Facebook. There has been sometimes that my clients do not have a Facebook, I have Instagram account, 
However, we optimize we optimize the ads, the graphic for to be used on Instagram as well, and we have received some um, some clicks. So you got to let Facebook to decide. It is a powerful platform. Another one is a bidding method. Some people do IB testing, or there are two two part of it. Now is IB testing and campaign optimization. When it comes to IB testing. I will, if you have been doing it for a while, then definitely. But campaign optimization is where Facebook decides where to put your money as best as it can. They're not there. Facebook is not there, even though they're a trillion dollar business, but they're not necessarily there to just take your money. Because if they look after you, if you give Facebook $1 and give you $3 back, guess what? You're going to advertise on that platform even more. So they're not there to rip you off. Um, another one, the last one is after click process. Not having any sales process in place, not having any nurture, nurture um, sequences in place, you're wasting money. Because the sale doesn't happen the first time when someone comes to you. First time when they send you a message, first time when they give you their email address. It happens when you nurture them, when it, you take them out of the platform, put it in your nurture sequence as part of your database, and you have a proper or effective after sales process or after click process in place to convert them into the paying customer when they are ready to purchase. So there's been the biggest, biggest factors when the cost of Facebook ads um, is a bit really high. <laughs> so one thing that I get, understanding how to leverage Facebook ads needs to be part of your part of your strategy. And if you want your content to be seen, it is becoming more and more likely that you're going to need to pay for that reach. That is not to say that you should abandon your organic traffic. What I mean by organic effort, that, that doesn't mean that you should abandon what you're posting on your feed, on going live, on making sure the stories, you, or you uh, publish your stories. They work well together. In my experience, the paid alone has never worked. Um, when we combine, and again, obviously by itself, it requires a lot of time and resources. When you combine them together, they give you the they provide better return on investment than your ad spend. So one, it, it's not separate one from another. They both, both work really well together. All right, let's talk about goals. Goals for organic posts, which you don't want to post to do any paid ads. There's always, everything you do, there has to be a goal behind it. There has to be an objective. What is it this thing that's supposed to do for you? So one of oops. So this is um this is something I want to share. Usually since 2008. Okay, so less than one, this is <laughs> what it is now. Less than one percent of people, one percent of people who liked your page will ever come back and see your page, or will ever come back and check out your page. Combine that with after 2018 with some algorithm changes, less than 2% of your followers will ever see your post. It is a bit disheartening. It is a bit overwhelming for businesses to go, why am I even doing this? Should I just forget about all the all of it and just do advertising? Should I um, forget about all the things? Would be better off focusing on Facebook ads? My answer, never. No and no. You, again, they work really well together. However, every single post you put out there must have a goal, even your organic post. So this is where strategy comes in. So goals for organic posts. Every time you post something, you've got to remember what are you trying to achieve. The goal is, is this the awareness? Is this consideration? And what I mean by consideration is, excuse me. Just 
So oh. that shows a bit for them how say you put out there. It has to have a look. Go on the one is awareness. Are you trying to build your brand? Is a consideration. Are there people who already follow your page? They might be interested in your products or services, but they're not sure. They're in the research stage. They're thinking, should they consider your brand or not? So consider, or the post we're putting out there is it for them to consider. Testimonials is the best thing to use. The, the One of the things that we use in, in my agency to find out, to help us determine the best strategy for my client, is we test them because we find out, is it a right content for your audience? That's your cheapest way to find out. We use the boost button to increase the reach of the content in, and put it in front of people who follow the page and people who are similar to what people, um, similar to people who actually could be your audience. That would give us, it's a cheaper way to understand if the content is the right content for the audience. And what is it that resonates better for your audiences? That's where it identifies, it helps us identify first performing content. And that should be the same goal for you. When you're providing content, um, you should be on top of your analytics to find out exactly, to identify the best performing content. Because one thing that works for us, for our customers, is we take the best performing content and we use that for lead generation. Because it's already tested, the audience already resonates. So as we already tested the copy, we already tested the image, we already tested the video. So it's all a matter of understanding, um, helping us to understand what works for the business, for the audience of the business as well. So this could be something else. If you might be your question, oh, I get that sometimes, that if it's doing really well, why do I even bother paying? So you've got to remember, when you are advertising, again, not all the ads are the same. For example, boosting is only going to increase the reach and engagement. It's, it's not optimized for the pay. It's, it's not optimized for lead generation. So, yes, absolutely, you need to pay to increase the reach as well. Because after 2018, um, I think I said that at the beginning, it has become a pay-to-play pay uh, platform, still cheaper. But yes, you need to pay because you spend all that resources. Don't you want to bring in a, bring in the quality of leads to your customer um, to your business? Absolutely. So definitely, you can use that to increase your reach. Then it comes to the paid ads. So there are three goals when it comes to paid ads: awareness, consideration, conversion. This is exactly in any marketing platform, and it's exactly the same on Facebook as well. So every single post you put out. Every single ad you create, is this going to build my brand? Is this going to help my already people who know about me or want my products or services um, help them consider my business? Conversion is making sure that they're ready to buy from you. When they're ready, they buy from you. So quickly, your paid ads always have to achieve a positive ROAS, return on your ad spend. And by the positive, I don't necessarily mean um, monetary, because sometimes we have one of the positive return on our investment is if the clients have, and they do blog posts, so we, we increase traffic to that blog post, then it helps us understand what they needed and we can retarget with the right offer for them. So that to us, those numbers, so those um data that the Facebook Pixel or Tag Manager or Tag Manager collects, it is a positive um, ROI for us because we can retarget those audiences. Okay, let's get started with Facebook ad. Um, so you've got to make sure that you, the two things that I want you to consider before we starting on anything is make sure that you get yourself familiar with Facebook ads policy. They updated without even sending any notification, but make sure you're very you are familiar with that. If you are doing advertising for your business, get familiar with it at least once a month. Check it out to find out what changes are here because it definitely helps you to write your copy, understand your business. When you're writing a copy and you decide, okay, this is doing really well, I need to boost it. When it comes to the boosting, when it comes to using your post to increase um, for advertising, then it goes into the ads policies and it might get rejected. So it's really good practice to know what the policies are. And I 100% recommend that you ad adhere to their policy. It is their platform and we need to adhere what their rules, what's their rule. 
Another one is your Facebook pixel. So you've got to make sure that you have Facebook pixel on the header of your page um, before we do anything. Because when you're sending traffic to your website, you want to make sure that you can have that data as well as, as best as you can. So I find that when, when people go to, um, when people in the business owners go to amplify a post or hit the boost button, that sometimes they are not thinking that about the overall objective and the goal of what they're trying to achieve. And I've seen that sometimes the post that might be great for brand awareness, they have expect sales from it. Not all Facebook ads are created equally. It is, they are different. Their objective is different. The objective you choose, Facebook optim optimizes them differently. So here's my biggest tip for business owners, to be honest, for any marketers, is before you just get started, slow down. Slow down and think about your objective. Slow down and think about your audience. Slow down and see what you're trying to achieve who you're trying to reach, where they are in their journey. So it's very, very important. I know um, that Facebook is, is this shiny object that we think if we press that button, that publish button, and all that money is actually on the other side of that publish button. It is not. On itself, it doesn't work. So it is if you're haphazardly just pressing publish button without thinking about your strategy, your goal, your audiences, be clear with your audiences, your copy, your creative and everything else, you actually starting, <laughs> it's a very expensive hobby. And I have to tell you, Facebook doesn't need enough, I think they make enough money. So you just have to make sure that you are 100% sure before you go ahead and publish that, publish that um, your app. So, when it comes to Facebook advertising, this is what I would like you to answer. I want you to go through it um, one by one. So this is what I ask. Every time we create an ad, this is what we ask. Number one. Oops. Number one, what am I trying to achieve? That's your goal. This is the most important part when it comes to any type of advertising. Am I trying to build an awareness? Consideration, conversion, what am I trying to do? Number one, what is my budget to spend on the ad? So this is the biggest question and it could be your question as well. If you have an existing business that already generates revenue, if understanding how much in the understanding the lifetime value of your client, every business obviously is different. You can work on 12 months, depending if you're a local business owner, you can work on 12 months of understanding how much they buy from you, how often they buy from you. So that will help you determine how much you're willing to spend to bring that person in. Again, how, what is your conversion? For example, if you bring in 10 leads, how many of them you convert to, um, to the paying client? Then you divide that number that you willing to pay divided by those 10 and that's how much you want to spend. This is what if you already generated revenue, you already have a customer. However, if you are brand new, there's always two ways, brand new or startup, there's always two ways you pay. You either pay with your time or you pay with money. Regardless of what it is, you're going to pay. So I want you to take that into consideration. If you are a startup, you need to make that decision. If, if you are um, time wealthy and maybe short in cash because the business is not generating revenue, then what it means is you need to put more effort in your organic post, in your going live, in your stories. So this is why it's important then to generate that um generate that engagement, generate that um, your your growth, then you can move into advertising. You can find through your um, through your organic effort, you can pick a right post, which one works, which one resonated better. That's what boost the button is so great for when you're starting out. 
So then you go, okay, so now I've done it for the past four months and five months or six months. I know which posts resonate. I know I've seen this. People engage with this post. People engage with sort of content. Then you can use that to create an app. So there's always two ways to pay. So the next one, this is so important, is that do I have a rock solid after click process in place? We not every depend again depend on your customers. However, not every customer is ready to buy there and then. You need to have an after-click process in place. When someone sends you a message on Messenger, please do not turn around and say, "Go and check it out on your site." Don't do that. Have a conversation. The most expensive part of advertising is for someone to actually put their hand up and say, "Anita, I've got some question. I need to talk to you." That is gold, my friend. You need to use that. You need to nurture that. Even if it's one person to a 10 person, every single person that sends you a message needs to be nurtured. So we cannot forget about them because not everyone is ready to buy. Even if you're an e-commerce business and your product is $20, $30, there are so often, if you have been in your business long enough, you know how many abandoned carts are there. Abandoned cart doesn't mean I don't want it anymore. Abandoned cart could be the kit cry, phone rang. I'm in the middle of the meeting and I was bored and I decided to buy something on my phone. So they'd have, it doesn't mean they don't want to, but you need to have a rock solid um, ethical process in place or sales process in place to nurture these people to become, when they are ready to buy, you are their best option because you were with them right through their journey. I hope I'm actually making myself keep um, I am clear. Hopefully, you understand what I'm trying to say. So now I'm going to go through three phases of Facebook advertising. We cannot sell to the cold audience. There are always going to be these three phases that you must th go through. Your audience will go through in order for them when they're ready to buy from you. So there are three phases: when it comes to advertising, awareness, Facebook conversion, and conversion. You might have seen this as a funnel, which is awareness, consideration, and conversion, right to the um, making the buy. So let's go, go through them one moment. The first one is the awareness process, which they call on top of the funnel. So the awareness stage is for people who are either completely unfamiliar, who can go deep on completely unfamiliar with the pain point they have what they need so these people are completely unfamiliar with your brand with your business and are unaware that they have a pain point that you can solve for them and by pain point as i don't mean they have a physical pain if you're a cupcake um, if you make cupcakes there is no pain point you can't say well i don't know what pain point am i i'm actually so what is the pain point that i'm getting pain point that i'm getting rid of you've got to remember everything you buy it's got something connected with our emotion. It's either status, it's either I need to look good. Um, I always say people, the cars, in some cases, the cars are exactly the same, but it's the status. My favorite one is watches. Watches do exactly the same, but it's the status if someone wear the Rolex compared to something else. So you've got to remember, it's not necessarily mean pain point, physical pain point. It's what you make them feel. Is that what I want you to remember? So when it comes to awareness, these people we call them cold audiences. When it comes to Facebook and Instagram advertising, what we consider cold audiences are saved audiences. That is from your demographics, interests, or lookalike audiences. These audiences are cold audiences. They're not aware of your business. They're not aware of your services. The next comes the consideration phase. So when it comes to the consideration phase, this is the middle of the funnel. They've already, uh, they, can't, they come through, they know what you provide, they know about your business. They call these people warm audiences. So because they already know about your business, they interacted with your business. So who are warm audiences? They engage with your Facebook page, with your Instagram page, your videos, the video, video um, 
they visited your website or your blog or any of the product pages that you have. So these are the people who are familiar with who you are, with your business and with your products. Last but not least, it's the conversion stage. One of the confusion when I see with a lot of people is that when we're thinking about advertising, this is what we think. We think advertising is all about selling. It's not. It's the three stages. Your Even your brand awareness stage is your advertising stage. So this is the conversion. This is the people who are ready to buy. They're ready, either ready to buy from, either they are um, ready to buy from yourself or anyone else, but they know what they need. They know your business, what products and services provides, they're ready to buy. So we call them hot audiences, meaning they, they know everything. They know um, they've already gone through the stages and now they're ready to make a decision. So the hot audiences could be, again, visited your website, um, landing pages, um, message your page, they interacted with your lead form, or they opted into your lead magnet. Whatever it is, they already they and they're already interacting with you. They already know what you need, what you actually provide. Success of the last one, which is the third one, it's it's the hardest part of it. And it depends on three critical um, components: the quality of your targeting. If you don't know who you're targeting, you're going to miss out. I think I said that from the beginning. You could have a perfect product. If it's a wrong message and you put it in front of the wrong audience, it's never going to work. You might have a perfect product service or a product to offer, but perfect copy, could you put it in front of a wrong audience as to where they are? Meaning you cannot be selling something to someone when they're in the awareness stages. They don't buy. If anyone says they can actually sell to the cold audience on social, all the best of them, it doesn't work because we do not come to our social platforms. We don't we don't go into Facebook and Instagram to get sold that. We this is social and it's called social platform for a reason. So it's so important. It's the hardest, the last component is the hardest, um, but it depends on three critical components. So there you go. These are the stages that your lead must go through before they actually ready to buy from You've got to remember this. You can't put an um, awareness post out there that's going to do brand awareness and expect them to buy from you. It just doesn't work. The biggest thing I've seen is when you're boosting a button, boost is not optimized to sale. It doesn't work. Boost is only optimized to increase reach and engagement. So I've got some ad strategy example for the cold audiences. So these are obviously examples. When it comes to objective, which is the goal when you're creating ads, reach engagement video views, the audience that we choose for these objectives for the brand awareness are interest and behavior based, life events, something is happening in their life, or your lookalike audiences. The content we use in that stage is educational, training, and inspirational. You've got to remember this, you have no idea who you are and what you do, so we have to warn them in. <laughs> Um, so then we move when it when they're already gone through it, they know who you are, but they're in a stage of they're not ready to buy. They're still thinking. So the objective that we use, the goal we always use for this customer for this audience, lead generation definitely can be message and phone call and traffic. They work really well to send them to their blog post or your website. The audiences that we use, they are really the source is either the engage with your Facebook and Instagram. We can absolutely do that. Video viewers, websites, visitors. Um, you might be able to target, um, actually, that could be a hot audience. So you can use, you might be able to use your um, uh, brick and mortar store visitors as well. The content we use is. We always talk about the benefit of the products or service. We never sell to them, even in this stage. If they choose to continue to go through it and maybe give you a call. But even in here, it's a bit hard to sell um, because they're in a consideration stage, not necessarily ready to buy, and they're not necessarily not aware of your business, and they think they might, you might be the right um, service provider for them. The content we use, again, products and service benefit, 
solutions that you offer. So you offer as a solution to that problem. Testimonials works really well. If you can have a video testimonial from your customers, even if it's written, that's absolutely fine. You can make it into video. But testimonials works really well at the consideration stage for them to take the next step and become hot audiences. So when it comes to the world of hot audiences, my friends, they are ready. You've already nurtured them to, nurture them to be here. Ask for conversion. Ask for email address. Ask for the book a call. This is, this we're going for a close. Um, audiences, your landing page visitors, your lead form visitors, your email list, which is your custom audiences, and content you can use, special deals, um, limited offers, book a call, book a session, um, buy a coaching session, or buy directly, like go ahead and ask them to buy. So these are the three stages you must consider when it comes to Facebook and Instagram advertising. All right, so that's it for today. Let's go back to the camera and see who's there so we can ask some questions. Oops. Hang on. I need to stop sharing. All right, let's see who's here. Oh, hi, Tegan. Trang, Trang, sorry. Trang Motoring. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, thank you. So at the moment, uh, 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 I have a small question about the pixel. So the small two on the right hand side or uh, left hand side. So for the Facebook page. Say it again. Uh, pixel, pixel. Facebook pixel? Uh, yeah, yeah. To the uh, traffic. Um. Facebook pixel for the yeah. traffic. Yeah. So Facebook pixel is a code that you put on your website, on the header of your website. Oh, so. So what it does is, is the code that grabs data when someone is on Facebook page and click on the link and they go to your website, face, they can collect data as to this person landed on your website. So then you can retarget those people. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's a code. Uh, it's a code, yes. It's a for code. the website. Okay. It's a so code it, for the website. It's similar to the Google Tag Manager. So it is a little snippet of a code. Um, it was not little, it was about three or four lines. But you put that on the header of your website. And that's what it helps them to communicate. The Facebook page communicate with your website. And uh, where, is there any difference from the Google Analytics? So yeah, it is definitely. It is different. Oh. It's different. But they work well together. You should have both of them. You should have um, Google Analytics and you should have Facebook Pixel together on your website. Because what these codes mean is that you have access, you have data that you can rely on. You can do retargeting. Even on Google Ads, it works really well when you have data to retarget. So you know when you Google something, and then you see the ad on your Facebook, you think, I'll Google something, I'm looking for something, or, I don't know, the most, I'm looking to book a holiday. And then all of a sudden, advertising to do with the holiday that comes up, it's because they, they've they got this code in the back end that is a very clever code. They don't know who you are, but they know that you with your IP address were searching for this particular um, holiday. So that's where you get a similar advertising for the holiday, for the country you're going, for the hotel you're going. So that's okay. what these codes do. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> not, a problem, not a problem. All right, so if you don't have any questions, I think we can stop. We can stop the train. Right, yeah, so stop. Okay. Yeah, thank you. No worries, thank you. Enjoy your rest of the day. Bye. Bye.